Hi everybody, this is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today I am back for day two of Scraptember and Christy's Beautiful Life, 30 Days of Sketches. You could see the sketch is in the upper left-hand corner and the Scraptember prompt for today is white background. So I'm following the sketch and I also have a white background. So I'm glad to be on track today for both of those prompts. In the description box, you'll find quite a number of links today. You'll see a link to the Christie's Beautiful Life channel and you could check out her video for today. You'll also see a link to the Facebook group, the 30 Days of Sketches Facebook group, which if you would like to get lots of inspiration and see the sketch for each day, you could join that. And there are also links to all the other scrapbookers who are following along. Some are following along on Instagram and some on YouTube, but you'll find links to their work in the description box as well. For today's layout, I decided to do a lot of mixed media and I'm using this collage technique and I learned this from Shira Manor, who is a YouTuber. And I will put the link to the video that I watched to get me my idea for this layout in the description box. I started this layout with a piece of 120 pound smooth white cardstock. I coated it with white gesso. Then I ripped up a sheet of scrapbooking paper I got that from Joann's and I use some gel medium to attach it down to the background. You could see that there's one large cluster on the left and some smaller clusters on the right. Then I coat those collage areas with a very light coat of white gesso. Gesso initially looks like you've really covered up whatever's underneath it quite a bit, but then as it dries, it seems to become a little more transparent. I was a little aggravated when I looked at the footage of this part of the process and I saw that it wasn't as clear as the rest of the video and it will clear up and be very clear again in a little while but this was too important of a part to just cut out so I'm just gonna explain to you what I'm doing. I'm taking some cheesecloth and I'm not using it to accent a photo. I've seen some people use cheesecloth in ways that are really not as much part of the background as this is. I'm really incorporating this into the background and putting some gel medium on top of it just to add some texture. But this is just going to be incorporated with all the other elements and it adds uh, a nice fiber uh, to the background. I'm trying very hard not to overthink where I put the cheesecloth. I'm just picking a few areas that are on that area that's collaged and I'm cutting some smaller pieces and some larger pieces and attaching it down to the background. Now the next thing that I do is I add some drywall tape. And I really like drywall tape because it's nice and sticky on one side. So I cut it into a number of pieces and I did the same thing. I just added it around the background. And now I am stamping on the background and I stamp on the background quite a few times. This is just the first round. That first stamp that I had already added, that is from a Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz set that's called Faded Type. I stamped some numbers. Then I stamped with a type stamp. I got that from Amazon. And then some Studio Calico stamps. One is a circle and one is kind of a very small screen or mesh imprint. And I like that one. I use that mesh one quite a bit. And you can see that for the most part, I'm staying on that collaged area, but I do venture off of it a little bit. Now I'm using some modeling paste. So you can see there are lots and lots of layers of mixed media here. This is, I think this might be my number one favorite stencil. I love stencils. This one is created by Dress My Craft and it's called the Splatter with Line stencil. And it's really cool because it's a grid, but it also has some irregularities and splatter look looking effect. So I like that one a lot. And then I add a little more stamping, but then I was thinking that I wanted to extend the modeling paste past the area that had the collaging on it. For everything else, I tried to keep it on the collage area. And I do for the most part with the modeling paste too, but I wanted those lines to reach out past that area of collaging and stamping and every all the other textures that I've already put on the background. So you can see that's what I'm doing here, just extending that out a little bit. And I'm using some uh, modeling paste made by the Crafters Workshop. 
And you can see here, once again, I'm adding some more stamping. This is another stamp from the Faded Type stamp set. A lot of this gets covered up, and I know sometimes people feel sad about that, and I know what you mean, but that's just kind of the way mixed media backgrounds go. You add a lot of things, and in the end, it all comes together to create an effect, but you might not be able to see all the individual pieces as much as you might like. So now I'm going back in with a little bit more gesso, just in certain places, and you have to be really careful to fully dry the background before stamping on it because I a couple of times I stamped and the background the gesso or the modeling paste wasn't totally dry and then I had to clean off my stamps but it all worked out in the end so here I am just adding a light coat of gesso and even when you cover things up it still adds to the overall effect I think it, nothing is totally covered up now I'm adding some sprays. Now I'm using some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists. And if you watch my videos, you know that I use those all the time. I absolutely love those. I think, though, that if I were to use this technique again, I would use a different kind of spray. I would probably use Delusions because a lot of this spray gets soaked up by all those different things like the fabric and the mesh and the color in time grows less intense but i'm still happy with the background and this is going to be a halloween themed background so i feel that it's appropriate but i do want to point out that if you use a technique like this you might have to apply the color a few times or you might want to use something that has a more intense uh, hue or a coloring to it and i find that delusions sprays have a, a very deep rich color so do the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists, but just on a different application. So here you could see that I'm adding some purple and some yellow to the background. And then I also add in a little bit of brown as well. I add some more traditional Halloween colors as the layout progresses. But for the background, I didn't want to get too literal with the Halloween colors. I just wanted to create a cool background. The embellishments that I add are much brighter than the background and that helps to keep the layout balanced and the background to recede and the embellishments to come forward. I use my water sprayer and a piece of paper towel to clean up some of the spray that had gone into the middle area just to make that diagonal look a little brighter. And I wanted to add a black edge to the layout. At first I thought I could do that by adding some black acrylic paint with a sponge, but that was way too messy. So I instead took a paintbrush and I am spreading the paint all along the edge of the layout. And I don't mind about not being too careful doing it. I feel like I want it to look kind of irregular. Then I added some black paint. I used a sponge and I dabbed the black paint in the background and at first I wasn't really too crazy about it I did just a little bit of it and I added some white splatters thinking that the white might help to balance out the black I was thinking that I might have ruined the layout but in the end the black isn't really that noticeable and it does bring the elements that are in the foreground together with the background and Again, I feel like you have to just take a chance and see how things look. And oftentimes with mixed media backgrounds, you can cover things up by layering other materials on top of whatever it is that you don't like. But in the end, I did end up liking the black. I'm glad that it was there. I'm adding some dots and I'm mainly adding those to the areas right outside of the white strip. I want there to be a transition from those big areas of color to the white area. And the dots didn't really show up all that much, so I'm going in with the mesh stamp and I'm doing the same thing, although I'm adding that all around the background. And I didn't mention it earlier when I was doing it, but I did add some black acrylic paint spl splatters as well. Now I am shifting gears and I'm working on the embellishments I'm going to use on my layout. I've had these in my stash for quite a while. These are Technique Tuesday chipboard pieces, and it's nice because these pieces have a white surface that you could stamp on. 
I'm not sure where I got this spider web stamp from, but I've had that in my stash for a while. I really like that one. So I stamped that on the circles and I also incorporate in a few other stamps. I use the Studio Calico stamps that I use in the background, the ones that have the dots on them and the mesh. I think that they're a good complement to these other Halloween stamps. This is a Stampendous stamp set and it's also Halloween themed. Stamping that all around those circles. And I'm really just having fun with these stamps because I know that the stamping doesn't have to be perfect. Because I'm not stamping any image that has to be very clear, it really doesn't matter if something doesn't turn out stamped perfectly. I'm using a recollection stamp set here, I believe. This was one that I got in Michael's. I always hold off on getting stamps in Michael's. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I should get this. And then when it's clearance time, it seems that the only thing that's left are stamps. So I've picked up quite a few Michael's or Recollections brand Halloween themed stamps over the years. Sometimes they come with dies too, but I'm glad I picked them up when they were available. Now that I have all of these pieces stamped, I'm going to start spraying them. My plan is to make the largest circles orange, the smaller circles green, and the stars purple and black. I spray them with some water and then I add the sprays and then I spray a little bit more water on. And that just helps the paint to move around a little bit and in that way, some of the areas will come out lighter and some of the areas will come out darker and they'll be a little more interesting. So I start with one layer of color, of course, and for the stars, I'm spraying some black. And then I go back in again later on with some more color. What I usually like to do is I like to add a few different versions of the same color. So I have some brighter green here and now I'm adding some darker green. And I don't like to just add one color green because I feel that you can get so much more variation by just adding even just two colors together. Sometimes I'll make it more than two colors. And here I'm doing the same thing with the orange. I want there to be some dark areas and some light areas over and above just watering down the watercolor spray. So I'm using a darker orange now and I'm using all different brands. I will put the names of all of the different sprays that I use in the description box. And I didn't really end up doing this on these particular embellishments, but there's nothing wrong with leaving some white areas too. White areas add a lot of interest and help to highlight the color. With the stars, like I said, I sprayed them with black and then just so that they're not just black stars, I added some purple to them and I'm adding this bluish purple color and I like the way it fills in the areas that weren't solid black with some purple and makes them not just flat. I feel like if something is all black, it'll just kind of lay flat on the page and it won't look as interesting. You could see here how I go back to all of those chipboard pieces several times and add quite a few layers of color. And you can also see here how much more vibrant and bright the embellishments are going to be than the background. And I had mentioned earlier how I would probably have liked the background colors to be a little more intense, but maybe it's better off that they're a little lighter and a little more dull because that creates a contrast between the embellishment in the foreground and the background. Well, once I have all of these pieces painted, I allow them to dry completely. And now I'm edging each of them with some black soot distress oxide. And I didn't include all of that because it's repetitive, but I went all along the outside and then on the circles that have the holes in the middle on the inside. And then just to add a little bit more variation, I use some splatters on the background. So I add the orange splatters to the orange pieces and the green splatters to the green pieces. And, and I add some black splatters to the stars. I keep the stars close together, hoping that the splatters will go mainly on the stars and not as much on the table. But I ended up just dotting a couple of splatters onto the stars. 
And to add a cool effect to the background, I sprinkled on some water and used some paper towel to dab up the water and remove a little bit of color. This is the photo that I'm going to be using. This is a photo that was taken in Salem, Massachusetts, where they have quite a few people dressed up in costumes. And this uh, vampire was pretty cool. So my kids were acting really scared in these pictures. And I decided that this would be a perfect picture to use in this little small circular frame. I have other photos where he's lifting his arms up and those I wanted to include the whole photo, but I thought that this was a good one to use because it's fine in its smaller version. I'm using some gel medium now to attach down all of these pieces and I am following very closely with the sketch. I was thinking that the stars didn't stand out enough. So I started with a paint marker trying to make some lines and then I ended up using a gel pen, a white gel pen. And I'm just putting some lines along the outside of each of the stars. And I don't do all of it on camera, but I do go back several times and put several layers of the white gel pen lines on the stars. Just they look a little whiter each time. Then I was thinking that I wanted to stamp a little bit more on the background. So I'm using this Tim Holtz stamp. This is a clear stamp of a little spider, as you could see that on his web. And then I pulled out this spider stamp and I'm stamping spiders all over the place. Now this looks like a vampire to me. And I was thinking that maybe I should have highlighted bats a little bit more than spiders on the background, but it's a Halloween layout and I feel like anything that's kind of creepy and crawly and uh, Halloween related would be fine. So I ended up using three different spider stamps. I noticed that as I was looking through my Halloween stamps, there were spiders galore. So I picked out three different stamps and I'm placing those spiders all around the layout wherever I feel that a spider would be appropriate and concentrating the spiders along the edges of the large areas of color. Then luckily before the gel medium dried, I realized that I did not leave room for my title. So I moved those circles apart from each other and I'm using some thickers to write Fantastic Salem. And I did not think of that title. I found it online, but I thought it matched this layout perfectly. I also wanted to make sure that I included some bats on the layout. So I found these bats in my stash. They're not a scrapbooking item. I believe I bought them on eBay a while back. And then I realized that one of the bats had previously had its legs taken off so that it looked like it was flying. But I liked that because it made it different and all the bats weren't so matchy matchy. And then I wasn't sure what to add until a few days later, I found these, I'm not really sure they are, orange sparkly circles in one of my embellishment boxes. And I thought that they were the perfect finishing touch for this layout. So I glued them in a couple of places around the layout. And that was the last touch. Here come the close-ups. Thank you so much for watching my video, everybody. It was a little bit different today. I'll have a more traditional scrapbooking layout for you tomorrow. I hope that you got some ideas that you could use in your scrapbooking layouts. Please take a look in the description box. As I said, there's lots of links and lots of information in there about this layout and about everybody else who is following along with Scrap Timber and 30 Days of Sketches. If you're interested, you might want to join the Facebook group. There's lots of great inspiration there. I want to say thank you to everybody for all of your likes and for subscribing and for your lovely comments. I really appreciate them. I hope to see everybody tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.